and we're up to chapter 6, Black Rabbit Island. Hello and welcome back uh, to the reading of Where Lions Roar at Night, The Fun and Adventures of a Pioneering New Zealand Family. This is the first book in the Barn Chronicles, written by me, Rosie Boone. And we're up to chapter 6, Black Rabbit Island. The broad, leathery leaves of the karaka trees shone in the afternoon sunlight. A fat wood pigeon flew low between the totra trees, its wings making a swishing, whirring sound. Millie looked up from pitching the tent and watched the birds settle high in the branches of a large karaka tree. See the pigeon, Jake and Sam? It's called a keraroo. They all gazed up into the tree. The keraroo sat still and silent on the branch, its breast shining soft silver in the light. Its head and throat and upper breast were a brilliant metallic green with a deep purple sheen. It's so big, said Sam. Millie nodded. No wonder the Maori used to hunt them for meat. Oh, said Sam, I'd never shoot one. They're so beautiful. Whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. The wood pigeon took to the skies and flew away across the meadow into lantern waste. Back to work, you two, said Millie. You get the hammer for the pegs, Sam. Jake, you hold up this pole for me. Sam ran off to fetch the hammer. His leg was healing nicely and Mum was proud of her handiwork. And Dad was right about the impressive scar. They had the tent up in a jiffy. It took a few trips to the barn to take over all their mattresses and sleeping bags and cooking gear. But soon they had the tent organised and a small circle of stones set out for their campfire. Millie had ordered the boys to collect plenty of kindling and firewood and they quickly appeared with armfuls of dry wood. Before long, a fire crackled in the ring of rocks and sausages sizzled in the pan. Angel and Lucy sat close by, studying the pan intently. You find some good sticks for our marshmallows, Millie told Sam. Jake can butter our bread and I'll keep an eye on the sausages. They were all excited. Ever since moving into the barn, they had been planning a camping expedition on the island. A large black rabbit had shot out of the bushes the first time they'd explored the island, so Mum had christened it Black Rabbit Island. In actual fact, it only became an island when the river flooded. Three old willows with gnarled and hairy branches grew in the old riverbed that ran around the acre of land. An ancient fijoa tree stood near the centre and a small grove of tota trees overlooked the river. They ate all of the sausages except one which they halved and fed to the dogs. Then they all threaded marshmallows on their sticks and squatted around the fire holding them over the flames. Millions of stars glittered above them in the black sky. Somewhere, a possum cackled. Angel growled and Lucy ran around her mother, ready for action. Can we make the dog stay with us tonight, Millie? asked Jake. He didn't like the sound of the possums. Sure, said Millie, they'll keep the possums away. Do you know... Here she paused and lowered her voice. Once, when Josiah was camping in a tent all by himself, he heard an awful noise outside his tent. He stayed awake nearly all the night, terrified, too scared to get out and go into Mum and Dad's tent. Millie glanced at the boys. They were watching her both with large eyes. In the morning, he asked Mum and Dad if they'd heard the madman who'd been laughing crazily outside their tents. Millie laughed when she saw Jake shiver. Was it a madman? asked Sam. She snorted. Of course not, silly. It was a possum. 
Jake looked relieved when he saw a small golden light coming towards them from the barn. Soon, Mum and Dad appeared. How's it going, campers? asked Dad. Good, sort of, answered Jacob. Will the possums come near our tent, Dad? Oh, not if you keep the dogs near you. They'll chase them away pretty quickly. I hate the sound they make, whispered Jake. I told them the story of the madman, explained Millie, grinning. Mum stared at her. You didn't, Millie. Do you want them to get scared and come inside? Millie looked a bit sheepish. Well, anyway, I'm here, so they shouldn't be scared. Well, if they are and they want to come back inside, I want you to bring them up into the barn. Why can't they go by themselves, muttered Millie. Millie, warned Dad in his serious voice. Then he grinned at Jake. I think you'll have a fantastic night, and when you wake up in the morning, you'll feel really glad you stayed. Dad was right. They didn't wake up until the sun shone on their tent and the birds chattered in the trees. We'll get the fire going, and I'll make us some bacon and eggs, said Millie. Go and get me some more wood. Jacob ran off, excited that morning had arrived and he had survived the night. It was so cool, he told the family later. We heard a few possums, but they didn't come near our tent. It took us ages to get to sleep, but then we didn't even wake up till the morning. Great, said Mum. Well done. Shall I tell you a funny story about a possum? Millie watched Jake nod eagerly. He obviously didn't mind anyone talking about possums in the daytime. Well, began Mum, when Kate was just two. Oh, this, laughed Millie. I know this story. Shh, said Jake. I want to hear it. Mum continued. Jake was two and Josiah was just three. Kate was playing outside while I did the breakfast dishes. All of a sudden, I heard her scream, Get it off me! I looked out the window, and there, hanging on her dress, was a large possum. Jake stared at Mum in disbelief, and then glanced at Kate. She grinned at him, and motioned to Mum to keep talking. I charged out of the house and ran towards her like a mother bear, protecting her cub. But the possum just clung there. So I picked Kate up and gave her a good shake. The possum jumped off and I ran towards the house, carrying Kate in my arms. And can you believe it? The possum chased us. Dad rolled his eyes. Followed. Chased, repeated Mum. I got inside and I slammed the door. Josiah came running from his room, wanting to know what was going on. I carefully opened the door to see if we could see the possum, and I got a huge fright. It had climbed up the fly screen door and was staring me in the face. I slammed the door shut again. Josiah ran to the phone and Dad's dialed Dad's work number. When Dad answered, he shouted excitedly, Daddy, come home quick! There's a hippopotamus climbing up our back door. Kate and Jake burst out laughing. Didn't he even know what a possum was, said Millie. How dumb is that? He just got his words muddled up, explained Mum. But you can imagine what Dad must have thought. A few minutes later, we heard his motorbike race down the drive. We watched him from the window as he jumped off and ran to the back door. Then we saw him slap his leg and start laughing until he was crying. He reached down and the possum jumped up onto his arm and wrapped its tail around his wrist. How come? asked Jake. It was the neighbour's pet and it loved to play games with her kids and jump up on their clothes and chase them around. Ugh! said Jake, looking at Kate. I don't think I'd want to have one as a pet. I would, said Millie. It'd be so cool. 
Well, don't think about it, said Mum. Why not? You had a pet cuscus in New Guinea. Mum huffed and puffed for a few seconds, and then she said, Well, that was then, and this is now, and that's that. Just then, thunder rumbled in the distance. Mum looked up at the dark clouds gathering on the horizon. Enough of possums. I think you'd better go get your sleeping bags and pillows out of the tent. It looks like it could pour down soon. Sure enough, the black clouds quickly rolled in over the trees and flashes of lightning lit up the dark sky. Rain began to dance on the tin roof and make a happy pitter-patter. Mum said she loved the sound. It reminded her of lying in bed in New Guinea and listening to the tropical thunderstorms pound their tin roof. Millie sat in the big armchair on the front porch and watched the rain fall in rivulets from the guttering. Dad was pleased. They needed this rain. The water tank was almost empty. Shame I have to go to Hamilton, Rose, said Dad. You could be in for a bit of a storm. Are you sure you'll be okay? Absolutely. You'll have to take down the tent if the rain sticks around. Now don't worry, said Mum. We can take care of things here, no problem. Sam and Jake came out with their bags and pillows. They were looking forward to going with Dad and staying with Nana and Grandpa for a couple of days. And they were going to a birthday party for their best friend, old Joe. Have a wonderful time. Mum gave them each a big hug. Nana will look forward to hearing all about your adventure last night. So will old Joe, said Sam. Don't forget the tent, called Dad again as he drove off down the drive. The steady rain continued all through the morning and by early afternoon a strong wind had picked up. The barn began to rattle and groan. The noise of rain on the tin roof grew louder and louder until it was hard to he hear each other speak. This is some storm, shouted Josiah as he shifted the tables and chairs in from the sides of the porch where the rain had begun to drive in from the east. I love it, said Mum. Penny and I used to run outside in the torrential rain in New Guinea and wash our hair. Yeah, well, I don't like this wind. What if the tin on the roof starts lifting? I don't particularly want to climb up and nail it down in this storm. Mum gave his arm a pat. Well, I'm glad you're here, Josiah. Millie, I think you'd better say grace said Mum at dinner time. You've got the loudest voice. Millie grinned and shouted out a short prayer. Dad's done a good job of fixing the holes in the roof, said Mum in a loud voice as they ate. Only one leak so far and that's right above the sink. Let's go down and look at the river after dinner, suggested Josiah. I'll bet it's rising pretty fast. They set off half an hour later with gumboots and raincoats and a few torches. When they reached Landon Waste, they watched the brown river roar and surge around the bend. The rain danced on the surface and churned it up even more. It looks angry, said Ellie. It sure does. Mum raised her eyebrows as she nodded in agreement. I wouldn't want anyone playing down here when it's like this. I think we'd better batten down the hatches tonight. Somehow I think there's more to come. Come on, let's get back to the barn.